Welcome to another edition of Social Media News Live. So excited you're here. I've got uh, one of my friends on who's been on the show before, but I'm so excited to have him back, Mr. Lou Mangello. He's amazing. He's got so many cool things going on. He eats live on TV sometimes, which is just amazing. I, I always, it's usually around supper time, and luckily it's right after I ate. Uh, so this time he was at the boathouse. Oh my gosh. So amazing. Grace, how are you doing today? I'm good, but what a job. I want to be paid to eat. I know. I, do well, I don't know if he gets paid for it. I know he pays other people, but uh, Lou, what, what, what say you? Uh, one, <laughs> thank you for having me back. Two, I am the luckiest, like happiest, chubbiest, most blessed man on the planet to get to do what I do. So thank I don't you. see. I mean, do you like exercise constantly? I mean, just to like, I'm I mean, sorry, is it what? just walking around, walking around the parks? I mean, I mean around like, the park. how many, how many steps is the park? Lou? Yeah. My I goodness. mean, come on. Like you've got to have a lot of steps in. So anyway, we've got some of our friends. Hey, it's Sabrina. Sabrina, we missed you last week when we went live virtually. Uh, saying, she goes, hi, it's me, Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina, it's us here at Social Media News Live. Thank you for always stopping by. Brian, thank you so much. You watched us uh, yesterday over on the Tailwind Show, and it's always good to talk with you and see you. I hope things are doing well in the UK. Uh, and more and more people are showing up. We, we love it. We'd love for you guys to sprinkle this out across the interwebs. Let other people know what is going on. Even if they can't uh, be here live, we're going to be talking all about Instagram today, all the new changes. And Lou is a master when it comes to Instagram. So we're going to be talking all about that. We'd love for you to let people know. Call them into the conversation. Let them know about what's going on here at Social Media News Live uh, because it's going to be a fascinating show. And with that, I'm going to hit go on the podcast machine and we'll get started. Are you good with that, Grace? Okay, here we go. Welcome to Social Media News Live. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. I'm Grace Duffy, and this is the show <clears throat> excuse me, that keeps you up to date on the world of social media. Today, we're joined by our friend Lou Mangello, and we're going to be exploring all the new changes happening on Instagram. We're going to discuss what you need to know about the new story links, collabs, desktop publishing, and much, much more. We're going to talk about how businesses can take advantage of these updates today. So if you want to learn more about these long-awaited updates to Instagram, you want to stay tuned to the very end and tag a friend or business that you think needs to hear about these updates too. So Lou, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, I'm so excited you're here. Uh, thank you for having me, but I too have also changed my name to Meta, so please refer to me as that. <laughs> there we go. That's right. So if you don't know who Lou Mangello is, he is a Disney expert and named one of the top 50 social media influencers. His podcast, WDW Radio, is ranked the number two overall podcast in iTunes, has been named the best travel podcast for nine, count them, nine consecutive years. He is a keynote speaker, entrepreneur author, and founder of the Dream Team Charity Project, which sends children with life-threatening illnesses to Walt Disney World, which is amazing, amazing thing. He has done, uh, raised a lot of money this these past couple of years. So he's a master when it comes to creating a sense of community, a sense of belonging, and just a whole lot of magic with his podcast, live videos, blogs, on Facebook and on Instagram, just about where every everything he does, he's it's just magical. So Lou, welcome to the show. And I, I made this specially for you, this how Disney is that? See? <laughs> wow, there I we feel go. like Barbara Streisand. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. We'll play you off later on. So, Oh, my gosh. Lou, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited. And we are going to get into all this Instagram news, but we cannot avoid the obvious, the, 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 the meta in the room. So as we know, Facebook is now meta, and people are speculating that it's either like just an alphabet Google situation, or are they changing everything? Uh, when you read about the description, it's it's like the it's so much bigger. It's the invisible and the visible, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, everything, right? <laughs> so tell us what what was your thoughts when you when you heard when you read heard saw all this happening yesterday? This this metaverse. <laughs> You know, it's so interesting because when things like this happen, you watch the official announcements and then watch the internet light itself on fire, right? But like everybody's losing their mind initially, like, oh my God, Facebook isn't Facebook anymore. And other people sort of taking it a, a little bit more of a relaxed approach. And look, it makes it makes total sense, right? Facebook focusing on the future, not just the short term, but I think the long, long term. Um, you know, I, I'm not so sure that the timing of this was completely by accident, but certainly this has been something that they've been thinking about for 
a long time. And I think it, it makes perfect sense um, because I think this is going to hopefully address and maybe allay some of the concerns, not the, that just creators have, but users have as well in terms of where Facebook is and where Facebook is going. Yeah, so one of the things I know a lot of people, uh, on, when this news broke yesterday, they uh, talked about like, they're doing this because they're trying to take, um, you know, kind of the spotlight off some of the maybe privacy issues they've had. And it was really funny. One of my favorite uh, newsletters is the Morning Brew. And one of the things said they they could call themselves Orange Juice Squared and it's not going to matter. Uh, people are still going to know what's going on. So there's a little bit of that. Uh, I was going to watch the actual you know announcement on my Oculus, but that would be too meta. So I, I didn't <laughs> see. Oh, dad jokes already so started good. today. Yes, right. So, so yeah, early. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. So early I'm purpose. sorry. Yeah. So, um, Grace, what are your thoughts on this? Because I know you're deep into social media too. Was this a surprise to you? It really wasn't. One because they uh, previewed it a few days ago, where they said we're going to have a new name. So this was already some some inclinations. When I was reading it, I, I was thinking that they're embracing the more futuristic aspects of their company. So they're talking a lot when we we're doing our prediction show last week, we we're talking a lot about AR and VR. You and I talked a lot about our Oculus. And I think they're going to do more of an investment in that. And when you see uh, what the images look like, so the pictures and what the avatars, everything look like, they are very realistic. So I think they are looking in, in this, like you said, the future beyond all mm -hmm. the apps that they have now beyond what it's it's being used for now. So I see this as being very future focused, very optimistic, very scientific, very sci-fi. So I don't know about the name. I'm I just and the logo. I'm like, yeah. I just I get it. I, I get don't. it. <laughs> so Sabrina it says this. Lot, it looks a lot like the movies anywhere logo. Yes, it does. Yeah. It, does. It, it really does. So Sabrina says this. It makes total sense. She agrees that uh, they have a parent company. It says the former, you know, she says this because she's a former corporate girl. It's long overdue to have that structure. So, yeah, I think it's more of a structural thing, but it's also, I think it's Zuckerberg's wanting to do this for a long time. He wants Ready yeah. Player One now. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. But uh, something that is here now is our friends over at Ecamm, who sponsors the show. But they have something really uh, cool coming up that I wanted to share with you guys um, really quickly. They're doing a design challenge. It starts uh, next week on Monday, and they have all sorts of cool stuff going on. Like the first day, if you want to learn how to you know, put together a profile and different scenes, like we're doing here today, like we're, we're switching all this stuff up. You want to customize your cal uh, color palettes on day two. You can create a branded background. Day three, you can design your own countdown timer, which... I'm kind of excited about uh, four, day four. You can build a lower third and day five. You can animate your lower thirds and overlays. If you want to find out how to do all that cool stuff, you need to go over and join the community on Facebook at ecam.tv forward slash community. That's ecam.tv forward slash community. I know I'm going to be there. It's going to be amazing. And thanks to ecam for helping to sponsor the show. So really quick, um, I wanted to talk about because there's like Camilla says, uh, hi from the UK. My Insta is tanking, so I can't wait to hear this. So Grace, break down this news that we're having and then we'll kind of jump into uh, this first uh, bit of news. Well, it was a toss up about what to cover first this week. And Jeff and I did go back and forth about what was more important, but we are leading today with these Instagram link stickers for stories. So Instagram announced on Wednesday, this breaking news that all users now have access to the link sticker feature in Instagram stories. And if you don't know what that is, it's where you can take a sticker and add your link to it. And then people can click on it and go off to your website. So this is now available globally and it's avail it's allowed Anyone can use it. So anyone, regardless of follower count, can easily share a link in their Instagram stories. So this ins this expansion does come at the heels of Instagram ditching the swipe up link in Instagram stories. So if you recall, you had to like swipe up and then to get the link. And so now everything is going towards these link stickers per Instagram. They've gotten a lot of feedback over the years that limiting links to accounts with over 10,000 followers. Imagine that 10,000 followers uh, <laughs> to only to only have access to this. So we're talking like um, historically, this was only limited to business and really, really high profile creators. I agree with this move. I like it because as you're seeing that you don't need to have a giant audience to be effective. You need the right size audience. 
But now, and now that link stickers are available to everyone or soon will be, I hear this is still rolling out. Lou, what do you think of these? new link stickers and do you think they'll be helpful in increasing engagement just like our friend Camilla was saying that her Instagram is taking is this something that she'd be able to use to drive up some of that engagement for instance without a doubt and I never understood this move uh, I never understood making links an earned feature because what, what it ended up doing and this may come as a as a complete shock to you is it made some people say well I'm going to go out and go buy my followers my mm -hmm. fake followers so I can get to this number for these vanity metrics so I can have, like, was Instagram just sort of fearful of people leaving the platform instead of having confidence in the value of people going off and then and coming back? But obviously it makes perfect sense and I'm really happy that now it's gonna be available to everybody. So the question I have, do you think this came from the rise of, the, everyone talks about it, but the rise of TikTok? I mean, because of the competition between TikTok and Reels that are going on, uh, and, and I wonder, you know, you're very kind and humble, but I'm wondering if some of the other influencers like, you're taking, that was mine. It was mine alone. I was special. And now that it's like not special anymore because everybody's going to get it, get it. So what are your thoughts on that, Lou? I, I don't think it should be special. I, I don't think that, you know, if there's going to be sort of, if we're trying to unlock achievements in, in Instagram and we're <laughs> gamifying it, I, I don't think that should be it. I, I think there should be other features. I think it's it's such a basic necessity for people who are trying to look, if you want to sort of grow your following organically in the right way, by showing the value that you bring, allow people to see the content that you create off the platform. Mm, that's a great point. So we have some, some, uh, some uh, comments here before you get to that next question, Grace. And it was like, uh, I wish they would give everyone the other way to add a link. It's hard uh, to get used to the other link and it's ugly. <laughs> so some people don't <laughs> like it. They want to be, cause it's only in stories. It's not in the, the feed or anything else. Uh, but oh. Holly says, I wish they would have done this five years ago. It would have actually impacted my biz. Now everyone is on Insta. It really doesn't make much difference. So Holly thinks it's like, nah, you know, too little, too late. So uh, just really interesting how, and Brian, our friend Brian says, I think it'll change the way and type of content people post to stories. So that's a great question. Um, yeah. Will this change the stories format? Right now, you know, if you didn't have 10,000, you know, it was a little easier. You, I, I feel it was a little more organic, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Are people really going to now do produce stories where they can really try to get them to click that call to action? Lou, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it will. I think it's going to open up a little bit more creativity for um, for people, because look, I think for me, one of the things I know this is going to be like the old man comment in the room, but one of the things that always concerned me about platforms like TikTok is the conversion off the platform, right? Getting people to swipe off of TikTok and go to see other things. And that's always been a huge dissatisfi dissatisfier for me as a creator. And I think as a consumer too. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to open up the, the, the doors for creativity. And look, as people who create you know, podcasts, for example, it's the only way and it's a great way to let people go and see and hear what you do and obviously come back to your home base on Instagram. Mm, good points. So on these link stories are only available in stories. This is a point someone in the comments has made, which are ephemeral. They're gone in 24 hours, yet feed posts and video posts do not have the option to include a link in the descriptions. You still have to do the whole link in the bio, they have to say in the descriptions, and it's super annoying. It also is several more leaps to get someone to do that call of action, to do that, that activity for you, right? So I wanna know, what are some strategies that you would like to offer our audience on getting people to take those extra clicks to get to your site, promotion, lead, mag lead, lead magnet, or whatever it is that you want to drive them to in the Instagram post. And the one thing that makes this crazy for me is I used to follow a lot of real estate people on Instagram and you see this house, I'm like, I want to click on this house, but then you have to like find the link in the bio, dig through the link tree, so many steps. So what can we do to get people to take those steps? I think you have to think from the, the mind of the consumer, right? We are fortunate or unfortunate in a what's in it for me society right now. And I think one of the great ways to, to do it, for example, is, and obviously this is not a day-to-day -day strategy, but there were things like contests where you have something that is compelling. They need to go to your site in order to do something or gain something or, or fill out something, um, you know, and you have to put some of that valuable content off of Instagram. Again, there's so many steps to go link in my bio, go to my link tree, click on that link. Like every single one of those steps is, is a potential, not only dissatisfier, but a, 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 
an opportunity to lose somebody from making mm -hmm. all of those clicks. Um, so what I usually do is is in my content, if I want to get somebody to somewhere, you know, go listen to my podcast, I'll do a pretty link and say, go to www.radio.com slash 655. So it, even though they, they can't click it, they can go to wherever they need to go or find it in their, their podcast app. You've got to give them a, a compelling why. Like you've got to give me a reason to click the link in my bio or to go and type a link somewhere else. Gotcha. So I want to ask some some questions about that because I know um, you mentioned contests and I know you have done, I think, two or three, like in almost in a row, it seems like it's on from from your show, you talk about it in your show and you drive them to Instagram. Is there, I mean, and you have a lot of Facebook followers. You have a big community at, you know, uh, the, your, you have, I mean, what is, how big is your community, uh, WWW radio? Um, it's pretty large size, isn't it, Lou? I mean, you hate Jeff, saying numbers. Size, I know. It's not the I size know. of your community. It's what you do. <laughs> so I knew, he was, I knew that was coming. But, I mean, because you, I mean, that's a very active community and it's just, it seems, so I want to know why you're driving them to Instagram instead of like, hey, join my community to get in this contest. Why did you pick Instagram to run your contest contest on? There's a lot of different reasons, right? So one, you know, I don't like putting all my eggs in one basket, whether it be the Facebook or, or Instagram basket. And it's a compelling way to get the people who are in the Facebook community to come over to follow on Instagram because ideally we should be posting unique content in both places, right? There's got to be compelling reasons mm -hmm. to to go to both. And I think Facebook is a, uh, sorry, Instagram is a great platform for running contests like that. And it's also a way, you know, because of the way I do it, having to tag other people and, and do other things, it's a great way to get other people on Instagram to find, hopefully like and follow what you do. Gotcha. I think that's a great, a great uh, way to incentivize people. And then before we go into the next section, because I got you here, I'm going to ask you these questions. Um, so you mentioned the the pretty link, and I want to make sure people think about this because I think this is a great way uh, to make it easy. You mentioned, you know, you give them your www.radio.com forward slash whatever episode number. Do you, so you set that up every time as a pretty link when you publish your podcast. So one, that's really easy to say. You can say that on your show and they can easily remember just a number at the end of your URL. Is there a service that you use to do that with? How did you set that up? Because I know a lot of people are going, that's a great idea. I need to do that for my Instagram or my podcast or whatever. Pretty link is just, it's a, it's a free and there's a paid version, which you, don't, you really don't need, but there, it's a free plugin uh, for your WordPress installation that lets you take any long URL, put it in there and then determine whatever you want that, that short, that pretty link to be using your URL as the base. So you're right. All people have to remember is 655 and they can go and find it on the site in their podcast app, et cetera. So from somebody who's been doing podcasting from like as soon as like the Zoom player was out or whatever it was, um, how do you keep, tr do you have a database of all this? Because you're pulling, I hear you on your live show and stuff. You're like, that was episode blah, 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 blah. And you know, I mean, do you have that like listed beside you that you have them all, like you can cross-reference them really fast? I have a team of researchers on the other side of this camera who are working day and night. I'm sure. Of course not. Okay. Um, no, I do. I do have a, um, I have a spreadsheet and then sometimes I'll just sort of do it on the fly as I'm thinking about it. I'll do a quick search. Um, okay. You know, just to find the number. Yeah. I just thought maybe you had some secret sauce about that. So anyway, but, uh, yeah. So thank you for breaking that down because it, it was always when I hear your show and I listen to it, I was actually listening to it this morning, listen to, there's a great episode out right now about Roy Disney. Who's kind of the, that's, I think it's two weeks ago. I'm kind of behind, but anyway, Really, really good. So if you have any interest in Disney history, you need to check that out at www.radio.com. So our next sec section is this. We're talking about Instagram collabs. And this is actually why I thought of Lou when we were uh, talking about this Instagram news, because he actually did it on Instagram, tagging another Disney expert, uh, Connor. And I was like, what is that? So it's very, very exciting. Um, so they rolled it out last week. They rolled out a couple things. They rolled out collabs. They rolled, rolled out super beat dynamic and 3D lyrics for reels. They rolled out the feed creation on desktop, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, and it was really funny. Once again, my favorite newsletter, Morning Brew, said, another day, another TikTok clone. So shady. So uh, so they said last week, Instagram once again stole its little sister's TikTok favorite shirt and said it looked better on IG anyway. So 
Very funny. Um, but what it's going to let uh, people do is it lets influencers like Lou get more reach on the app. Essentially, it's Instagram's way of making sure creators can maximize reach on Instagram as they would via TikTok's duets. So you can co-author content with a fellow Instagram user, and the post will show up on both of your profiles. So for brands, this collabs feature opens up a whole new way to partner with influencers, gain social clout by association, and reach engaged communities. However, they have said paid partnerships will still need to be appropriately disclosed according to regulatory guidelines, even when using uh, collab. So later said, we anticipate this new feature will uh, have a rise in collaborations within the creator community, especially for educational content that drives positive change. So we're going to talk about each of these new features one by one, but let's start with these co collabs. So Lou, I've read that this feature is being tested, but I saw that you have access to it and have tried it out. So can you tell us about it and how it works? So I only knew that I had it because Connor reached out and said, hey, we, can we collab on this? And I'm like, oh, here's this kid with this, you know, I don't even know what collab means. I'm Googling what collab means. No, so he says, can we use the collab feature? And I, you know, I had no excuse that I could come up quickly to, to give a reason to know. And I said, yes. And then I clicked the, you know, the to invite him. I says, oh my God, I made a big mistake. What did I just do? But it's not, but it's not because it's it's a great way for, in a case like this, a person that you do a show with, <clears throat> excuse me, to have that same post not only show up on their feed, but you're sharing views, you're sharing likes, you're sharing content, which is why it's really important that the content be relevant on, on both sides of the equation. But it's also not just a great way to collaborate, I think, with brands, but to, to collaborate with other creators. And again, I think the tide rises for all boats. I think that's great. So, I mean, especially I, I didn't, I need to check with Connor and ask him and say like, did you get a big boost? Cause like Lumen Jello blue check, you know what I'm saying? Come on, come on <laughs> over there. So, um, but what do you think makes collabs different uh, from just like tagging someone else in your posts? Um, and do you know, does it work with both vid videos and posts or just posts? I believe it works with anything in your posts. Again, this is the first time I'm using it. And I'm sort of watching to see what the, um, what the difference might be on both sides of the coin, because obviously Connor brings his audience to my content and, and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'm excited to test it. So I don't, I tried messing with it a little bit. I still don't think I uh, have it yet, but I'm, I'm so, so Grace and I, like if I do a post like Lou Magello was on our show and I can put it on there and then like I could tag Grace, she could put it on hers. Lou could ignore yeah. me like he usually does when I stalk him, but he does not ignore you. He is here <laughs> so for you right I, now. I just give a hard time. Just, Jeff is so needy. I, I am very needy. Can you tell? I mean, so, yeah. So. Jeff, when okay. you come to speak at Momentum in two weeks, we'll test it out right there, and we will we'll collab together. Oh we'll my gosh, I I don't know if I can handle waiting that long. So, by the way, lumangelo.com forward slash momentum, you can get your tickets there. <laughs> so, go ahead, Grace. I'm sorry we interrupted you with silliness. No, I my question is very pressing. I want to know how you send a collab request, right? So I, I know that uh, Caleb came to you with this request and there's someone that you already knew, but how do you essentially set up this relationship with someone that you may not know or you want to get to know or you want to collab with? I mean, are we talking like big, massive promposals here? Do you just send an email? Like, how do you, is there a way in Instagram that you can send this request and say, can we collab? How do you, how do you get together on this? <laughs> So when I created my post, <clears throat> excuse me, it showed up as an option and then it showed up as an option for Connor and he was actually able to, to sort of make the request of me. So you can, when you tag somebody, it will show up sort of in, in the post itself as an opportunity to invite to collaborate. And then the recipient of the tag also has that to say, hey, can we collaborate on this? And then you can say yes or no. Mm. Sabrina has a great question. She goes, is collab with only two people or can it be more? I think it's just two, but I haven't, like I don't have it yet, so I don't know. So has anybody heard anything else? Grace, have you, is it just for two people? The only, the examples I've seen have only shown two people, but again, this is something that they're just rolling out. So all I've seen are the, um, I want to say the stock photos, but that's not right. Like they're, they're company photos of it, right. like their company promo photos of it. And they've, I've only seen it with two other people or two people, sorry, not two other people, two people. Gotcha. So, right, because up on top, it'll say, you know, it'll say Lou Mangello and Connor Brown. Will it say Lou Mangello, Connor Brown and 14 others? Like, 
where does that limit possibly run if it is more than two? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So I, I have a, because they are kind of using kind of TikTok's idea, I have a feeling it's just going to be two, but who knows? Yeah. We'll find out. So Lou, um, so do you have any tips for people? I know people reach out to you for, for um, all kinds of stuff, like being on their show. Uh, and things like that. But um, do you have any tips for people who are looking to create, you know, a poster feature and, and finding those people to collab with? Um, you know, there's a kind of a right way to ask and a wrong way. I mean, it made sense because Connor was on your show. I mean, he was on it for the entire time talking about Roy Disney. Um, but what are your thoughts for, you know, just kind of I, I best pa- practices, I guess, to, you know, maybe collaborating with somebody who's maybe a couple steps ahead of you, and that you want to like reach out, hey, I, I did this, you know, would you want to collab with me? What are your thoughts? You know, I think it goes with with, with anything, right? It, and I think sometimes people get misdirected by the metrics. And what I mean by that is like, oh, I want to go collaborate with somebody. So I'm going to go find somebody in the Disney space, for example, that has the highest number of followers. And I don't think that should be it. I think that you need to find somebody who's work you authentically enjoy and say this would this would be a, a partnership that makes sense uh not just because hey we want to try and increase our numbers but you do something that i like and, and, and i think look connor's been on the show multiple times this was not some sort of mm-hmm. strategic marketing on either of our parts to try and just increase our numbers it, it was just an, an organic extension of the things that we do together so i think it's it's forming those real relationships first and then looking to do some of those things like collaborations. Yeah, I think those are great tips because, uh, you know, you do want to, you want to do, everybody wants to grow their account if you're, especially if you have a product or service, but there's a right and a wrong way to do it. And I thought that, that what you just said is a great example of, you know, you don't need to look for the biggest one, but the one that you might share or, or cross audiences together with would be the, the best bet. So. I think those organic relationships are the most fruitful too, right? That's a natural fit. It's it, people can see past, that that like you know hiring an influencer to do X Y and Z and it's not authentic. People really latch on when it is a genuine connection, like you and Connor have, having been on each other's shows, both talking about Disney, having this really great show. Uh, my question to you is: Have I know collabs is still fairly new ish? They started testing it, I think, in June. So I, uh, but they're starting to roll it out to people. Have you seen any cool or innovative use cases for collabs so far? Are there any businesses or creators that are using it in a way that might be different than how they're regularly posting? And um, you know, how are they using this to kind of engage with that new audience that they're getting, or re or re engage with the audience that they have? So I haven't really seen it yet, you know, because to your point, this is very new and I haven't even Mm -hmm. seen that show up in my feed a lot. But again, I think this is going to open up the doors to some of these creative partnerships, right? What are some of these things we can do together? Look, I mentioned things like contests before and I I don't use contests as, as purely a tool, but I think it is a great way to engage your audience, to reward your audience and get creative while being able to collaborate with others and then do something where you can really bring in audiences from both sides to benefit not just the 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 people who are your followers but to benefit the creators equally as well. Yeah, I love this I think it's a great way just to, you know, even when you were at like a, you know, Grace you were doing a lot of conferences, Lou's getting ready to do mon- uh, uh, momentum, you know, I was just at social media, uh, week, Denver, I mean, day Denver. And so being able to do that on post, like when you're like organically out there with people and like, Hey, take a picture or a selfie together or whatever, being able to do that to both accounts. I just think it's cool. I think it's a way to kind of give back to your friends or people you meet. I mean, how cool it would be like if you would go you know, to, mem- to momentum and you could have, you know, Lou tag you as well. Uh, not only tag you, but, you know, collab on your stuff. I mean, it's, it's really, really cool. So I think it's a, it's a great way to, you know, build goodwill even, you know, between two different people. So I'm excited to test it out. Uh, by the way, we have been talking about momentum. Do not forget about lumangillacom forward slash momentum. Uh, Lou, I'll let you, because we, before I um, talk about that a little bit, I wanted to bring up this from uh, Angela. She goes, I'll see you both at momentum. So I'm very excited that I get to hang out and see Angela. So that will Love be it. awesome. Yeah. So talk about what momentum is really quick and, you know, when is it and how quick you need to sign up. <laughs> so momentum is November 13th and 14th with an optional mastermind day on the Monday, Monday following. It is a two day, one room, 50 person event uh, to really help you move the needle, uh, make changes to your business, your brand, your life, 
right in the room and and honestly turn what you love into what you do. Um, Jeff, I am I am incredibly thrilled to have you as one of the presenters this year and, and bring your experience and your expertise to to share it with people um, in a very collaborative um, environment. Yeah, I'm so I love those kind of conferences, I, or workshops and all yeah. that. So I'm so excited for that. Uh, by the way, I, I wanted to make sure we also give another shout out to our friends over at Ecamm who sponsored the show. You can find out more at socialmedianewslive.com forward slash Ecamm. I know Lou's a user of Ecamm as well. So if you watch his live show, he's using that. And sometimes it's on mute, but we'll, we won't talk about that. Um, but <laughs> that's my fault, not Ecamm. Not, Let's be clear. So, that's not, that's not so, Ecamm. Does yeah. Ecamm have a shirt that says you're on mute? And I have a special of edition of it I'm bringing to Lou just for that reason. Oh, so they, no. get, I asked, I asked Katie for it. I said, "Can you get me one for Lou?" Because it's kind of a running joke. So yeah, so we got that coming. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> our next segment about um, we're going to be talking. This is really cool. This is desktop publishing for Instagram. So uh, you know, everybody uh, who does social media for a living is rejoicing. So you can now post photos and videos under one minute, of course in a desktop browser directly to Instagram. It's available to users worldwide, particularly useful for businesses and users that want to make better use of their expensive cameras. So uh, just think you could do stuff in Lightroom and take it right over into Instagram and post it. So you can get approvals, like if you had client stuff, work you're doing, testing layouts and looks. So um, uh, Gizmodo said that Instagram had previously allowed you to access your feed through the browser, but only for messaging and checking updates. And it was only for a phone-only app. It wasn't even iPad. You couldn't even use it on the iPad. And now, as this creator economy has taken off, and uh, it's really been doing well for Facebook, so they needed to evolve and give some more flexibility. So this is very, very cool. Um, all the social media managers, like I said, rejoiced. Desktop publishing has been around for some time, but it always had this really weird workaround. You had to use a third-party tool and uh, you had to save different versions of your image, all this kind of stuff, and now it's more integrated, and I am super excited about it. So, Lou, what do you think of this update? Are, are you, a mo I mean, you create a lot of content on Instagram. Are you doing it all on your phone? Uh, will you kind of switch your, your workflow now? So I do everything on my phone. Um, I try and do it natively in the app, and, and to be honest, and, and I might be completely wrong here, but this is, the, I think, the way I've, I've been trained to start thinking my first thought was does using the desktop application affect the algorithm at all is it less organic mm. than posting to instagram directly because and again i might be completely wrong for example going live i absolutely think that going live on facebook via mobile gives you a better return it gives you i mean i'm not a numbers guy but the numbers play out the numbers seem to be higher when you go live on mobile than you do versus desktop. So that was my first thought here. And is, is this move, you know, solely just to get part, to get away from some of those third party workarounds because doing it on desktop almost feels awkward to me. Like, <laughs> right. it's, still, even though it's, official, it's still as a workaround because I'm supposed to be doing this natively on this app, which I know is now no longer a photo sharing app according to Instagram itself, but mm -hmm. I still feel like I'm supposed to be doing it there. So it, it's interesting because, um, and I, I'd be interested to see what Brian Farrell, who's in the audience, says about this because he is a pro photographer. His his Instagram feed's amazing. Um, Brian, if you're here, make sure you drop your link in there in the in the comments because he's a wedding photographer in the UK and he has amazing photos. But I wanted to know because, you know, we had the same problem a lot of times on Pinterest. People would create this amazing stuff on their desktop and then they would put it on their phone and it shrunk down like you couldn't see it would it doesn't play the same way so i think you got to be careful if you are designing stuff on the desktop that you test it out on your phone at first so uh i just think that's something that uh, people will have to take into account you know when they start using this so no i agree uh, we have the same issue too we were we we published we're having a offer right now over at restream and we were we had to like make sense of the where all the um all the little buttons were when we were recreating it. And it's just something that probably wouldn't have happened if we were building the thing in mobile, but we, we built out the animation. So I totally agree. It does, it does change the workflow and Instagram is very mobile first, even with Instagram live, they're still not opening that API up to third-party tools. They want to be very mobile focused. So this is an interesting move in my opinion. 
But mm -hmm. again, I think it's just a response to all the social media managers that are having to share files into Google Drive and, <laughs> right. you know, work with creative teams. And, <laughs> and uh, but I think if you're off, if you're doing this on your own and it's your own business, then yeah, I think mobile is just more natural because it's you. You yeah. approve. You don't have to go through approvals. You approve what you do. <laughs> I think it's going to be great for for t doing, like I said, Lightroom and not having to, you know, go to different places and stuff. But I also think we have to be careful of making sure it still works on mobile. So, um, yeah. So next next story. This is kind of funny because I thought it. I didn't know this happened, but I guess it's, I'm like two weeks late. So Grace, break this down because uh, this is rather interesting because we we kind of poke fun at IGTV quite a bit on the show. We kind of poked fun at IGTV last week on this show, right? Jeff. So the headline is Instagram is ditching the IGTV brand. They're not ditching the product. They're ditching that brand and keeping it as an isolated app on its own. So the news is that Instagram now has combined IGTV's long video format and the Instagram feed videos, which are shorter, and a new format simply called Instagram video. So it's another step towards our larger goal of making video more of a central focus of Instagram, the Instagram experience. Uh, so IGTV was built as a mobile app to rival YouTube, but it did have the misfortune of launching two months before our friends TikTok. Mm -hmm. So it came out uh, two months before. So when TikTok launched in the US. And so I think a lot of times it's just gotten buried. So IGTV was already losing ground as a standalone product. I think it was rather successful, but by Instagram standards, where if you recall, Instagram launched and it just blew up and exploded. So after you have that, everything pales in comparison. But I think it did okay. But in early 2020, Instagram did drop the orange IGTV button from uh, the Instagram homepage, and it explained that most Instagram users were now finding IG content, IGTV content, excuse me, through the preview shared in feeds and explore. So if you guys recall, you can see a video in the feed and it'll, it'll show you the first couple seconds of it. And then you click to watch more over on IGTV. So in reality, IGTV was never really a standalone product or stood alone on its own very well. And so, and it failed to drive those large numbers again. Lou, what do you think? What do you think of this? Do you think people are going to be adjusting their Instagram strategy in response to this change? Or do you think it'll just be business as usual? I, I guess I should scale this back. Like, how do you, how do you use IGTV? Did you ever just go to IGTV and watch content? Never. And I, my first response was, come on, man, like, stop making this so complicated. Like, just simplify uh -huh. it for everybody along the way. You've got stories, you've got reels, you got IGTV, you got live, you got all these different things. Like, you can just spend your all day trying to create content for um, Instagram, which, like I said, the, the you know, Adam Asseri said, look, we're no longer a photo sharing app. Like, mm -hmm. clearly, video is um, is the focus. Um, and and it is part of my strategy. Um you know, not just uh, on stories, but but certainly reels and and sort of going back to the point I made before, especially having to sort of navigate this oh so very weird and evasive Facebook algorithm and and what works and what doesn't. Um, I think reels is has to be, and this is something I'm going to talk about actually at Momentum, and we're going to talk collectively. I think Instagram video reels, whatever, has to be part of your strategy, especially in terms of trying to reach a new audience, right? And trying to, to gain, grow your number of followers. So a couple of questions. And, and so, you know, the way people consume content, because um, it's, it's going to be different. And Gary has this great question. He goes, so, oh, so IGTV isn't going away. It's the name that is, he's kind of confused. And I get it. I'm like, we talked about this last week on the show is I think that there's going to, there's there's putting too much stuff in Instagram actually it's it's yeah. bloated it's crammed in there I think they're gonna have to do a redesign in the next year but that's just me so IGTV it's the name is going it's gonna be all in videos except for reels which is so weird to me I mean that's that's the difference Gary is that um, it's not called IGTV all your videos goes to this one spot except for reels which I, you know that eventually everything's going to go in one place. It just is going to, I think. But um, they don't want to give that up to TikTok. So, um, so you don't ever use. It. 
Go, I go love ahead. this comment. It's overly confusing. I can't tell my reels from my shorts. No, I cannot either. <laughs> I That's cannot great. either. I'm so happy somebody else. I, I'm like, oh my God. They're going to be like, we're never having Lou back. He's old and confused. I'm <laughs> glad that I'm being validated that it's not just confusing to me. Yeah, it, it's it's just too bloated. So my thing is, is I don't, the, what, the reason TikTok works is it shows you uh, funny stuff or what you're wanting to over and over and over again. You can just flip it and flip it and flip it. YouTube shorts is getting kind of that way too. If you, especially if you look at it in the mobile app, you'll see these, uh, the short shelf, uh, underneath there where you can see some videos that kind of draw your eye to them. And, um, but reels, it's just a weird thing you've got, you have to go to uh, anyway, I digress, but, um, I think it's going to be, uh, really, Yes, yeah, somebody said I can't. I can't tell my shorts from my pants. Okay, now it's just getting weird. So <laughs> now that's uh, getting weird. Yeah, but we'll the just... reels are great, and the, and the algorithm on the reels too is not as fine tuned as some other platforms. Right. So YouTube and TikTok, my shorts and my reel and my you know TikToks are very on point, but Instagram reels keep showing me the same type of content that I do not want to see. I do not want to see. So just like it's over right. and over again. So I don't think that reels is even as responsive when showing you delivering the content that a user might want to see at least in my not in my experience so that's the other thing by that the way there's a little part of, there's a little part of me that's no so curious about what you're seeing that you don't want to see but we can we'll do that <laughs> babies. offline babies like my feed is just babies like my children are teenagers like i don't have baby fever but it shows me babies and i'm like i'm not having a baby for you instagram i'm sorry i'm not <laughs> <laughs> you draw the line at that, yes, I'm, just, I'm like, glad. There's a day, there's a collab there's a collab there that obviously has to happen ahead of time, but it, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh, here we go. I, so, so here, okay, I want to I want to I want to pull it back, and I'm going to call it a little bit of audible here. Is that I want to talk about your Instagram strategy, Lou? So, like, I want to know how many times do you post on the feed versus are you trying to do a story every day, and how many? I mean, because you're on there a lot. Like, I have your little. Your story thing is always showing up like, you know, right after mine, you know, like Lou's got a new story. So do you try and do you batch content and then sprinkle it out? Or you're like, I'm at the park today. It's going to go crazy. I'm going to share all this stuff. So what is your strategy for Instagram? So this is my honest, <clears throat> my strategy is not a strategy. And, and maybe that's to a fault um, because I've always felt maybe wrongfully so that part of what I loved about Instagram was that it was real time, it was authentic. So other than knowing that on Monday morning, I'm gonna share out what my latest podcast content is going to be, I don't say I need to post for the sake of posting, you know, one post a day, two stories a day, whatever we're quote unquote supposed to do. I do what feels right as it happens. Um, and then if a day or two goes by and, and I have nothing to share, I won't. I'm not gonna sort of do it for the sake of doing it. So my strategy, is just intentional um, and, and it's gotta be sort of, you know, meaningful and real. And I know that sounds lame, but it's true. Right. So do you do reels? I don't remember, I haven't seen any reels from you, I don't think, maybe I just missed them. Do you do them? Uh, you know, it's funny cause I looked ahead of time to see <laughs> and I've done probably like six or seven. I haven't done one in a long time. And, and again, not checking the numbers. I was like, wow, these have done pretty well. I should start doing these more. And it very much is part of, of the strategy going forward. Um, not just to provide content to the existing audience, but as a strategy to help reach a new audience, because unlike stories, you know, reels, right. Whatever it's called, Instagram video is going to be shown in the explore tab. And, it, and I think it's going to be um, a great discovery tool. And I think that's what I want to use Instagram for is discovery and sharing and, Facebook for community and conversation. Okay. That's a, so I know you're a live video guy. Do you do any Instagram? I mean, Instagram lives. Have you done any of those or experimented with those at all? I've done a, a few just as experiments um, and they were fine. Again, not measuring the numbers, but sort of measuring engagement. Um, Facebook still, I think is, is just better for me in, in that regard. But every now and then I might be somewhere and I know it's going to be a, a relatively quick live. I might just do it on Instagram just to sort of test the waters and, and see how it goes. So I'm just going to, this is like the lightning round. Um, so the other question I wanted to ask is um, when, what you you mentioned your strategy, 
and it's really hard to get like links back to your content. I'm assuming you don't get a ton of links back to your podcast just because it's it's harder to find out. I mean, you made some great points about how to do that with a, a short link and all that kind of stuff. But your your Instagram strategy doesn't sound like it's going to it's for traffic. It's for like discovery. So are you putting out content that you're really trying to hook like new Disney fans that may have not seen you before to look at your content or what is your you know, what's your end goal for Instagram? Like, why do you post content other than you're already engaging the people who really, you know, follow you anyway? And, oh, there's Lou. He's on Instagram. So what is your, like, okay, business strategy behind it? So I think, for example, if I post something about a new podcast, look, if you're a podcast subscriber, you're going to get the notification, hopefully, or you're going to be looking every Monday because you know that that's when the show is supposed to come out, but I do post it there, not just to sort of act as a reminder or a place. If you're not on Facebook, some people like to just talk or comment um, on Instagram as well as a discovery tool. You know, I want people to not only like it, but, you know, maybe be incentivized to, even if they take a screenshot of it and share it in a story and, and hopefully do use it as a bit of a discovery platform as well. So it's a little bit of both. Um, and, you know, I, I wish I could say that I had this very <laughs> elegantly laid out strategy of exactly what I do when, you know, I'm posting about Halloween candy this week because I like Halloween and I, and I just want to sort of have fun. It has nothing necessarily to do with quote unquote, my business of Disney or, or the business of my business, but it is just a way to engage people who, as you know, I do consider to be friends in just, just a fun kind of way. So I think that's a great point because like your post, you're like candy corn, which is a divisive uh, thing that I did not realize how much it is. There you go. See, I love candy corn. I always have. I, I practice I what too. I preach. And, and uh, so let's know in the comments if you like candy corn or not. Um, but I, th but it's your community and everything. If I could sum up one thing, like looking at your brand from the outside in it's it all's community. And so everything goes through that funnel. So even the posts that you do on Instagram or your lives or your podcast or everything, it's all about community. And that community is what drives the business. And so I just think that's uh, the, the filter that I see your stuff through is always about that. So I think in that way, you did an excellent job on Instagram because you're actively getting new community members, but you're also talking and engaging and sharing with the community that you already have. So and. To be clear, that is always focus first. Like, mm -hmm. you know me, Jeff. I, I When I say I don't worry about the numbers, I'm also not worried about growing the numbers. I think everybody else is so worried about, well, I've got 10,000 followers. Now I have to get to 11,000. I don't care about that. I care about the 10,000. I'm making up a number. I right. care about the X amount of number of people who are there because if you give them your attention, you give them your love, you give them your focus, they will help you grow organically and I think the right way your community as opposed to, well, you're, I've got you now already. Now I have to focus. The content I post is for the people who are there already, not to try and lure somebody else in or to attract somebody in to follow me. I think that needs to happen organically and that's why they stay. And that's why the community remains so strong. Yeah. And I think you also do things and we're getting to community now, which is great. I don't care because it's very, very important. Um, is that, you also create new avenues for your community. So like, I don't know when you started the spoiler support group, but that to me is an example of like, okay, I don't want, you know, there's this new stuff coming. I don't want to ruin it for anybody else, but we're going to have this other thing because the community wants it. And I think that's yeah. a thriving group. So can you talk a little bit about why and how you created that? You, you hit on the operative word. It's, it's something that the community wanted. They didn't necessarily come out and say it, but you can tell by reading posts that, okay, people want to talk about something, but they also want to be respectful of others. So my feeling is if somebody asks the same thing three times, if you get the same question three times, it's obviously a common problem. So I said, well, the easiest way to do it is to create another place to go where we can have those conversations while being respectful of those that don't necessarily want to see them ahead of time. Yeah, the problem is, is when you when you subscribe to that group, which I am, and you did not see like the latest episode of what if you're like, no, no, I don't want to, it pops up Facebook, stop it. So anyway, yeah, you gotta be careful. So we have a question from Maggie that I, I want to address. I know that we, I, I, just to bring this, this back great, to Reels yeah. real quick. He asks, what can we explain what Reels is? And the best that I can do to explain it is that it's multi video clips that are up to 30 seconds and 
you can add uh, text, AR filters, it's audio. So it's basically Instagram's take on that TikTok experience, except it's happening with Instagrams. And how this differs from stories, from what I, what, what's really funny to me is for reels, you have to like scroll up up to get to the next one. And for stories, you have to scroll left right, to get right, to the next one. Right. So that there's also that confusion as well. Turning into and Snapchat. This, yeah. Yeah. And how this differs into stories, I'll let you guys answer because other than the placement and how often I see it and what type of stuff I'm seeing, I, I think Reels is more like, it's not it's not people that I'm following where stories are the people that I'm following. But I'll let you guys explain. I would say Reels stuff. are always video based. There's not really yeah. s- static images is what I would yeah. say the biggest thing. What would you say, Lou? What? No, (laughs) but it's really interesting. It's interesting that the question is being asked because Maggie is not the only one. And I think that's part of the problem. We we talked about this earlier, like Facebook, Instagram is starting to get too confusing. And I think this is their realization. Like, wait a minute, we need to step back and maybe just make video video. It doesn't have to be reels and stories and IGTV and all these different things. Let them just sort of all live in this one central place. Wait, do I swipe left or do I swipe up? Like, right. you need a nine-year-old to go, no, dad, you're doing it wrong. This is how you do it. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so, and Sabrina says this, she goes, oh, good point. Uh, the content I uh, the content I post is for the people that are there. Uh, so, Sabrina, you got to follow Lou if you haven't already over on uh, Facebook. Watch his lives and check out his Instagram because it's really good. This goes for anybody, not just Sabrina. But I, I like Sabrina. Everyone. I yeah. So, <laughs> Everyone. yeah, Gary goes, yes, it's getting, it's starting to get a little too confusing. I agree, Gary. It's, uh, it, you almost need a guide. Like, I need one of those, those books for dummies just on how to use Instagram. So, uh, right. or, or my 17 year old daughter, come on in and show us how to do this <laughs> yeah. uh, Instagram thing. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we talked a little bit about the other couple things that rolled out, which I am still confused on. Super Beat is a dynamic and 3D lyrics for Reels. So it's stuff that goes inside of Reels. Grace, you you know, this is something that I you brought to my attention. So what is Super Beats well, and they're just, the other they're, things? They're, they're, they're additional AR effects, right? So okay. Super Beats is just a visual edits to the, so the beat of your song choice, I think it just like does some effect on there to go with the beat of your song choice. And then dynamic 3D lyrics are just on-screen lyrics that are now dynamic and they're 3D looking, so there's a different effect. So this is obviously just like, two new AR things that they're adding to make reels a little bit more interesting. Um, I think they're very music based, which I think they're trying to push is that audio, right? Because that's Mm -hmm. a, that's a big deal culturally over on TikTok is, you know, you have a sound and people latch onto that sound. And so I think they're trying to capture more of that type of uh, content, that type of culture over on reels. Awesome. So Lou, kind of the final question if you would, uh, t- you know, talk to somebody like uh, maybe Maggie or uh, some of, uh, you know, somebody who's just getting started on Instagram and they feel a little overwhelmed, like I am never going to get to the Lou Mangiello level of sharing or like, where do I even start? What do you tell somebody who's, you know, somebody, and it could easily happen at Momentum, somebody like, I'm not on Instagram na- yet and I really want to be because I know it's going to be good to build my community. Where do you tell them to start? I mean, look, I think, you know, and this might come as no surprise to you. I think you have to ask yourself why, like, why am I getting on there and why should somebody follow me? Like, what is the content that one, I want to share and two is going to bring value to somebody? Like, why would you need to answer the question for yourself? Why should somebody follow you? Like, what are you going to do that is unique? What is your differentiator? Um, And i wouldn't look at other people to see what they're doing. I think you have to go and be you and do the stuff that that feels right for you, that aligns with your messaging and your value system as opposed to, look, I'm still trying to master that very first TikTok dance and I can't quite get it right. <laughs> so, um, you know, yeah. you got to sort of stay in your lane and, and do what feels right to you and you will become a magnet for the people you want to attract. So I lied. Final question. Um, the This is, so Disney you know, I'm diving into it for a new podcast and all this other stuff. And, and they're the master storytellers, you know, Disney, Pixar, all that Marvel now, Star Wars. Um, and storytelling is very, very important. And I think you do that even, even when you do your candy corn, you know, Halloween candy, there's a, there's a story, there's a story there. So what would you tell people, like maybe a lesson from Disney when they're creating content, like 
about storytelling and moving people along a journey. I would thought you were going to ask me to tell a story about candy. And I'm like, well, listen, first of all, <laughs> you can only eat so many Halloween Oreos before uh, you start to feel the, your the skin turns orange. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, but from a storyteller, I mean, look, I think, you know, look, from the days we were cavemen, right? We were all story gathering around a fire, like telling stories to each other. And I think sometimes people are so focused on content as opposed to, you might not think that anybody is interested in your story and they are right. When you go to a place like Disney world, it's not just about showing them the attractions. It, it's sharing your personal story. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier in terms of, of what your differentiators look, anybody can go to Disney and do a POV ride on, you know, mm -hmm. big thunder mountain railroad. What has to be different about your content is are the stories that you were able to tell. And again, going back to, you know, you will find you will find your community uh, of people that will gather around that. Yeah, that's great. I think that's a great, great uh, advice. This was chock full of information. Sorry, I kind of went off the rails, but you know, when you get somebody an expert in, and you just kind of have to ask them questions they're not ready for. Um, or me, or me. Yeah, or, yeah right? no, Lou is an expert. Uh, Lou, tell people where they can find you, what you got coming out uh, up next. Talk about a little bit more about momentum, and uh, where people can find all your good stuff. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. You guys always make this so much fun and incredibly interesting and I think valuable as well. You can find everything I do on the Disney side of things just by going to wdwradio.com or find it in your favorite podcast app. And everything else I do on the business and speaking and momentum side, you can find it loumangelo.com. I'm at loumangelo on all social and momentum. We now have two spots left for our conference, which by the way, it's no accident that it's in Walt Disney World. So even if you're just looking for an excuse to tell your spouse, parents, kids, whatever, that, hey, I need to go to Orlando on business, it's it's a great uh, excuse to come to Momentum as well. Yeah, I am so stoked. I was stoked last year before it was canceled because of the, the COVID uh, stuff, but uh, I'm just, I'm so excited there. So if you're going, let us know in the comments. Two, two spots left, folks. So go to lumangelo.com forward slash Momentum and check it out because uh, – I would go even if I wasn't speaking, but it's even better that I get to speak. So, which is high praise. Yes, it is. So, Grace, where speaking of high praise, um, once again, amazing <laughs> job putting together this show and keeping us semi wrangled. Um, tell us, <laughs> tell us where we can find out more about the amazing Grace Duffy. I am the video content manager over at Restream. You can find us at Restream.io. We are running a Halloween special right now, thirty one percent off a. Um, either a month or an annual account. So check that out over at Restream.io. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And by the way, this is also a podcast. You can find us over on the all the, the podcasts, Google, uh, iTunes, all the places. Uh, don't forget to look at <laughs> look at um, uh, Lou's uh, podcast too. I mean, it's one I listen to. There's not many I listen to every week, but his it just makes me happy. It's at WW Radio. Just search for that in your favorite podcast player. And with that, we thank you guys so much for uh, being a part of our show today. Thank you, Maggie and Gary and Sabrina and Ryan and all the folks who showed up in the comments and Dustin. All the guys who uh, uh, and gals who showed up today, uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you to our sponsor, uh, Ecamm. Uh, you can find them, more about them at socialmedianewslive.com forward slash Ecamm. And with that, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Have a great one. Bye. For Mac, call Ecamm Live. And if you got a green screen, you can set it up right in Ecamm Live. And you can bring that into your different meetings. If you're feeling fancy, you can move yourself into the corner of your frame to do a commentary or reaction video. You can even add in video clips just by dragging and dropping it in. Pretty much everything's drag and drop.